translated. This is from people at the Commonwealth Fund, Karen Davis and her colleagues. I'm sure you can't see that. It's at the bottom. But I just want to point out that the, this vision of moving to more bundled forms of payments has implications for how you organize care delivery. So what they do is they have this schematic. I'm not sure if you can see it very well, but you think about the ways that people are talking about changing payment, moving from pre pure fee-for-service down here as the least bundled form to global payment per enrollee, or in other words, full capitation. Uh, we already have a DRG case rate for the hospitals. And then um, you think about bundling hospital and post-acute care. That's, that's part of what's included in the legislation. And here it shows what type of organization can easily handle these kinds of payment. So you have the small independent MD practices in hospitals. They're, they can handle fee-for-service. It's really hard for them to go much beyond that. And then all the way to the right, integrated delivery systems. Think Kaiser Permanente. Think the VA. Mayo, Cleveland Clinic are pretty close. Uh, they can they can actually handle this much more aggregated form of payment. In order to, to handle aggregated payments of this kind, bundled payments, you have to have size because you have to be able to handle the risk of getting one or more patients who have unusually high expenses. And you have to have management capabilities that are frequently lacking. I'm a little ashamed to say that my own university's hospital refused to take capitated contracts for hospital care several years ago. And they publicly announced the reason. This was not just a negotiating play. You, you might think it, it would be. But they said they could not manage the costs under a capitated system. They could not track the expenses for each patient and figure out efficient ways to deal with it. I don't think Stanford Hospital is unusual in this regard among academic medical centers. I think that's a very, very common problem. So you have to have a high level of organization. You have to have the right supporting IT. You have to have the right people in order to be able to handle bundled payments. And this is one of the reasons why the legislation didn't go as far as some people had wanted. Uh, you'll be hearing more from later today about comparative effectiveness research for, from some real authorities. I just want to point out that this is part of what's behind the other features. Comparative effectiveness research, as you all know, is supposed to be about figuring out which treatments work best uh, in, in the real world. I, so um, Roger Herdman was uh, largely in charge of the Institute of Medicine Committee that looked at the initial priorities for comparative effectiveness research. And what's interesting is they and the Federal Coordinating Council of Comparative Effectiveness Research interpreted the mandate as much broader than just looking at treatments or diagnostic tests. In fact, there's huge interest in looking at delivery system issues. How do you best deliver the right care to patients? So not which drug or which device necessarily, although that's part of it, but also how do you make sure that they actually get the care that they get the right care, what kinds of mechanisms are in place, how do you increase adherence? Issues like that are very high on the list of priorities. So this is a quote from Gail Walensky, who is one of the major proponents for comparative effectiveness research. I'm not going to read through it, but she basically says the way she expects this to have uh, an effect is when it's used to inform how we pay for care. So it's not just about the information. It's how you put the information to use. Now, those of you who have reservations about comparative effectiveness research probably have reservations in large part because you're concerned about how the information is going to be used. You may care about problems with how the information is acquired, but I think everybody views the positives and the negatives as being highly tied up with <coughs> what kind of payment system is this information going to be embedded in.